I might be stretching the definition of what an indie developer is by saying Hello Games is an indie studio. And by what criteria do you define a studio as being an indie developer? I looked online and there really isn't a set criteria that defines what an indie studio is. There are certain common things about indie studios that would mark them as being an indie studio. One, they're usually an independent company uh, that is not tied to any large developers that are privately owned, which Hello Games is. They usually have a small development team. And small is relative in the gaming industry. It could be as many as just one person to as many as a hundred or maybe two hundred people, which No Man's Sky was developed by a team of about initially ten, if I recall, and now they're about a hundred, maybe maybe a little bit slightly under two hundred right now. So under those definitions, I guess you could call Hello Games an indie studio, but and they're even published uh, on consoles through 505 Games, which is an indie-focused publisher, which stays out of the developer's hair. They don't interfere in their projects like what other uh, publishers do. But I think there's one thing. There's, there's one defining thing which sets indie developers apart from other game studios. And that is the willingness to take risks on some crazy ideas. And frankly, No Man's Sky was definitely one of the craziest. Everything in No Man's Sky is procedurally generated. Now, that doesn't mean that all the objects are all generated by the game code. What procedural generation does, it is a extremely complicated form of random generation of content. What it will do is it has an algorithm that can be used to create terrain, much the way Minecraft does. But then there are pre-made assets that can also be randomly put together to create things, such as structures, ships, creatures, even plants. And the game utilizes all of this. So there's a lot of pre-made assets in the game that are used to create things. And this is what procedure generation does. It pieces all these things together and it uses a seed code with randomization in order to build things in the game without the developers having to actually go in and hand make everything. And this can have good results, it can have bad results, and have mediocre results. And No Man's Sky has had the full range of good procedural generation and sort of iffy procedural generation over its lifetime. There, it initially launched in 2016, and it was very bare bones. It wasn't really what Sean Murray had promised, and that generated a lot of hate. But the game had a lot of people who liked it. And the people who liked the game stuck with it. And a lot of the haters have now been drowned out by the people who really loved the game and stuck with it throughout the years and throughout all of the major updates that have come from Hello Games, all of which have come completely for free. The latest update is the Outlaws update, where you can play as a criminal. There are now outlaw systems, and there's even an, a story-focused expedition uh, based around an outlaw group that you have to uh, go and investigate. And this game has really, I would say, shown that if you stick with a project, even if you launch it in a really or state like let's say cyberpunk 2077 that game was highly ambitious and cd project red made a lot of promises and they delivered on some they sort of mediocre delivered on others and they didn't deliver on a lot of other things and there were 
major problems, mostly on the older consoles, but they launched in a similar bad state that the initial No Man's Sky had launched in. Now, I believe that Cyberpunk 2077, a couple of years from now, will have the same kind of revival that we'll see now with No Man's Sky. You will get updates, expansions to the game, and you will see it improve. That's because CDPR is, even though they've had some problems and there's a lot of haters out there who are hating on the game, there's a lot of people who love the game too. And they did sell a lot of copies. So they're going to stick to it. And I know that they're going to abandon that engine and move to Unreal Engine 5 with uh, the next Witcher game. But I do believe that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to follow in the footsteps of No Man's Sky in improving and becoming a much better game later on. And No Man's Sky really showed the industry, Hello Games showed the industry, you know, even if you do launch a game that in a bad state, you can save it. And Square Enix did the same thing. Square Enix launched Final Fantasy XIV in an absolutely horrific state, and the game was actually shut down. And they brought Yoshi P in, who was their the head of their um, Dragon Quest MMO, and he saved the game. And now, now Final Fantasy XIV is like the number one MMO out there beating world of warcraft although the game itself didn't beat wow it was more like wow beating wow than anything but final fantasy 14 really demonstrated final fantasy 14 and no man's sky really demonstrated to the industry how you do this if you launch a game in a bad state this is how you fix it and this is how an indie studio develops a AAA game. I've been Mike DeZorch. Thanks for watching. This is another Inspiring Indies. And I'll be back with another one next week. Until then, see you.